While the PG era was much cleaner and family friendly compared to the Attitude and Ruthless Aggression eras, it still had some very inappropriate moments. Let's find out what WWE got away with. This is sick! To many fans' delight, John Cena returned to WWE at Money in the Bank. Just about everyone was happy to see him, except for Roman Reigns. A few days later, Reigns grabbed a mic and mocked Cena for how repetitive and boring he was. It wasn't anything that controversial, but then Roman Reigns compared John Cena to this. It's like missionary position every single night! But wait, Roman Reigns wasn't done yet. A few weeks later, the head of the table and Cena came face to face. I guess Reigns didn't feel like the rivalry was heated or personal enough, so he said this. 20 plus years of missionary might have been good enough for you, but it wasn't good enough for Nikki Bella. Bobby Lashley and Goldberg threw everything they had at each other at SummerSlam. Lashley won the match, but the Almighty wasn't done yet. Lashley started attacking Goldberg with a steel chair, even though the fight was over. Goldberg's son, Gage, tried to come to his father's defense, but Lashley put him in the hurt lock. This seems like nothing out of the ordinary in WWE, until you remember that Gage is 15 years old. That's right, Bobby Lashley assaulted a minor. That can be up to five years in prison. It's not like I'm reading too deep into this either. MVP gets on the mic and defends Lashley by saying he couldn't have known that was Goldberg's child. Correct me if I'm wrong, but not even the Attitude Era went this far. The North American champion, Johnny Gargano, wasn't too happy with NXT general manager, William Regal. Finally, Gargano had enough and decided to storm into Regal's office with Austin Theory. Oh, yeah, that's what I was looking at too. Those, uh, nails. Okay, if you thought that was inappropriate, you haven't seen anything yet. Throughout Tales in 21, Dexter Loomis was feuding with Johnny Gargano and Gargano's group, The Way. While they were supposed to be enemies, one of the members of The Way, Indy Hartwell, was attracted to Loomis. Johnny and the rest of The Way were tired of Dexter Loomis and decided to end it once and for all. Gargano and Loomis faced off in a lover or lever match, meaning that the winner would get Indy Hartwell. During the match, Loomis accidentally bumped into Hartwell and he immediately lost focus. Johnny Gargano seized the opportunity and defeated Dexter once and for all. Like any good story, true love prevails, and Indy Hartwell decided to pounce on Dexter Loomis and make out with them. Just some good, wholesome family entertainment, right? But wait, listen to this. After their makeout session, Dexter and Indy got married. Then they went on a honeymoon with Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae tagging along. Johnny gets worried about what Loomis and Hartwell might do and sneaks into their hotel room. Gargano then finds a ton of condoms in one of their suitcases. If that wasn't enough, Dexter and Indy then come back, forcing Johnny Gargano to hide in the closet. The newlyweds then have a pillow fight, causing them to shout things that make it sound like, well, you get the picture. I seriously can't believe they are able to show this on a PG show. An old rivalry was rekindled at the start of Tales in 21 when Triple H returned. Randy Orton came out unannounced and demanded a fight with the game. Triple H refused at first, but eventually the Viper got his wish. The two men agreed to face each other later that night, but started fighting before a match could even start. As they were brawling, the lights in the Thunderdome went out and the game disappeared. Alexa Bliss appeared behind Randy Orton and then suddenly shot a fireball into the Viper's face. That's a pretty horrific way to hurt someone, and the moment was made even more disturbing when Randy Orton had to start wearing a mask to cover his burns. If that wasn't creepy enough, a few weeks later, this would happen. <coughs> this is a PG show, ladies and gentlemen. Since it was a no-holds-barred match, it's not surprising that Drew McIntyre and Sheamus' fight at Fastlane got pretty violent. While just about everything that happened was intense, by far the most disgusting moment came when the kendo sticks were used. Drew grabbed one of the weapons and then stabbed the Celtic warrior in the eye. McIntyre didn't gouge it out or anything, but this seems like something you'd see in a hardcore death match, not a PG WWE show. Despite reports that WWE was returning to TV 14, the show still displays a PG rating. This is bull while the shows might technically be PG, what we're about to see is definitely not. Like, how did the censors miss this? 
We added that censor, by the way. WWE actually had an uncensored F-bomb on Monday Night Raw in 2022. What's even crazier than that is that it happened twice. At Money in the Bank, the Street Profits fought the Usos for the Unified Tag Team Championship. The Usos won, but in controversial fashion, when it was clear that one of Montez Ford's shoulders were not touching the mat. This led to Ford saying this. What a mess up! Yep, that's another F-bomb WWE did not censor. However, the best use of the F-word in 2022 has to go to Matt Riddle. Because your wife divorced you and took your kids and they don't want to see your bitch ass anymore, huh? Dude, you don't get I'm not going to beat you up. I'm oh, going to oh, f*** you oh, up, bro. Where the oh, f*** are you? Brock Lesnar, though, had one of the best insults of the year. After losing the WWE Championship at the Royal Rumble to Bobby Lashley, the Beast confronted the Almighty the next night on Raw and called Lashley this. Bobby! Seriously, how did WWE get away with doing this? On NXT, Malik Blade and Idris Inoufe were sitting backstage talking about their tag team. Their discussion was interrupted by the NXT Women's Champion, Mandy Rose, who fell onto Malik's lap. Rose was then chased out by Kylie Ray, leading to this very inappropriate moment. Idris, I need a minute. They're getting away, let's go after them. I need a minute. And if you need any more clues as to what WWE was trying to do, Wade Barrett spelled it out on commentary. Looks like the competition to get a date with Mandy Rose is um, stiffening up. This isn't the only adult moment that happened in WWE this year. On the Raw after WrestleMania 38, Zelina Vega and Carmella were set to compete. However, Zelina was still upset about losing the Women's Tag Team Championship last night and got on the mic to blame Carmella. Vega brought up Mella's upcoming wedding with Corey Graves and this led to the tag team partners starting to fight each other. Carmella ran into Graves' lap and then the two started getting romantic with each other. Very romantic. Again, how is WWE still rated PG? At Extreme Rules 2022, Edge took on Finn Balor in an I Quit match. Balor had with him his Judgment Day teammates, which didn't make it easy for the Radar Superstar. However, Edge's wife, Beth Phoenix, was with them, and she helped even the odds. Judgment Day knew they had to eliminate the Glamazon to win, and they did just that when Rhea Ripley knocked out Phoenix with a pair of brass knucks. This was kind of violent, but it was taken to the next level when Rhea threatened to give Phoenix a concerto. Edge said he quit, but that didn't stop Ripley from doing this. Not only is that super violent, but it's also incredibly cold. Rhea Ripley, by the way, is not a PG star. First off, her storyline with Dominic Mysterio is very suggestive. Because I saw the potential in him, and I made him into a man. You might be saying, I'm just looking way too deep into this, but take a look at how Rhea Ripley pins her opponents. Come on, look at that. You mean to tell me that isn't intentional? Plus, look at what she did to Dominic Mysterio before making him into a man. Need I say more? Jeff Hardy's entire addiction storyline this year doesn't really feel all that PG. Reason being that drug and alcohol addiction is a very real problem, and that Hardy has actually battled with substance abuse in real life. However, the specific moment I'll highlight is the urine test. On SmackDown in June, Sheamus and Jeff Hardy met in the ring to sign a contract for their match at Backlash. The Irishman refused to sign unless Hardy took a urine test. Jeff agreed, but then he did this. Sometimes it's better to be pissed off than pissed on. Yes, I know that's not real urine, but still, that's just nasty. This segment actually got cut on the west coast of the US because it violated Fox's standards and practices. Need I say more? After nearly winning the Women's Royal Rumble match, Shayna Baszler had a lot of built-up frustration. On the February 10th episode of Raw, the Queen of Spades made her official main roster debut by attacking the Raw Women's Champion, Becky Lynch. The assault wasn't anything out of the ordinary, until Baszler decided to bite the back of Becky's neck. Not only was the Raw Women's Champion covered with blood, but so was Shayna Baszler. Of course, this is all planned but this seems more like something out of a horror movie rather than a PG show. Becky Lynch rolling around after the bite only makes the attack seem more vicious. Moral of the story, don't get on Shayna's bad side. One of the longest rivalries of 2020 has been between Rey Mysterio and Seth Rollins. It all started when the master of the 619 teamed up with Aleister Black to take on the Monday Night Messiah and Murphy. After getting himself disqualified, Seth Rollins grabbed Rey Mysterio and pushed the luchador's eye into the steel steps. 
This set up a match at Extreme Rules, where Ray and Seth could only win by removing the other man's eye. At the pay-per-view, Rollins once again used the steel ring steps, but this time he actually extracted Mysterio's eye. You might say the effects WWE used just made the moment silly, but since when is removing someone's eye PG? To make it more disgusting, Seth Rollins started throwing up afterward. Rey Mysterio began wearing an eye patch after this, but recently started appearing without it. Even though Rey's eye removal wasn't real, it certainly doesn't scream family friendly. The triple threat ladder match at Clash of Champions between AJ Styles, Sami Zayn, and Jeff Hardy was pretty brutal. There were a lot of intense moments, but Sami Zayn provided the most disturbing one. During the match, Zayn pulled out a pair of handcuffs and locked Jeff Hardy's ear to a ladder. I don't know why, but seeing that just makes me tense up. It got even more disturbing when Jeff started carrying the ladder with his ear still handcuffed to it. Watching it, I was worried the entire time that something was going to go wrong and Hardy was going to get seriously injured. Thankfully, everything went as planned, but still, that image of Jeff's earlobe getting attached to the ladder is hard to watch. Back in August, Shane McMahon returned to WWE and introduced Raw Underground. It was sort of a WWE version of Fight Club where anybody could compete and there were little to no rules. Now, it's not Raw Underground itself that makes the list, but instead, the female dancers. To keep with the underground, illegal feel, Raw Underground had three women in revealing clothes dancing on a stage. They didn't do much, but the way they were presented didn't feel very PG. The dancers were only seen one week and were removed the next without any explanation. The likely reason is because WWE wanted to preserve their image of being leaders in women's sports. At WrestleMania, and both of these reasons make this moment feel like anything but PG. In early 2019, Alexa Bliss is hosting an episode of her show, A Moment of Bliss. Right before she was about to go on stage, a production assistant went to tell her that her segment was coming up. However, when the man entered, Alexa Bliss was still in the process of getting dressed and didn't have her top on. This was so blunt and came from out of nowhere that it shocked a lot of fans. The moment lasted less than a minute and was a cheap way to get a reaction. That's why I'm ranking this one so low, on top of the fact that it didn't have an impact on anything. Even in the PG era, WWE didn't shy away from using weapons. However, they really pushed the envelope at the 2016 Extreme Rules pay-per-view. Chris Jericho and Dean Ambrose fought an asylum match with weapons hanging above the steel cage. One of them was a bucket that contained a bag of thumbtacks. The two men desperately tried to throw each other into the tacks, but ultimately, it was Chris Jericho who got slammed onto the bed of nails. Thumbtacks are not common in WWE, so it would have been surprising to see them in any match, but it was made even more so because it happened in the PG era. Not surprising, we haven't seen thumbtacks used in WWE since this match. In the lead up to his match against Triple H at WrestleMania 25, Randy Orton began an all out attack on the game's family. The most personal moment happened in the final weeks before the big match. With help from the legacy, Randy Orton handcuffed the game to the ring rope. Then, when Triple H's wife, Stephanie McMahon, tried to save him, the Viper knocked her out cold with his signature DDT. The part that pushed the whole thing over the limit was when Randy Orton kissed Stephanie while Triple H helplessly watched on. The PG era wasn't even a year old at this point, so WWE was really trying to be kid friendly. It's still amazing that they did all this. Now believe me when I tell you, this was a real match WWE did during the PG era. The match I'm talking about was the eye for an eye match. Just as it sounds, the only way to win was by extracting your opponent's eye. Rey Mysterio and Seth Rollins were the two who fought in this grotesque match stipulation. Both men tried to gouge each other's eyes, and I still have a hard time believing that this actually happened. The eventual winner was Seth Rollins, when he got Mysterio's eye out of its socket. Of course, it was all scripted, but still, this is not family-friendly entertainment. Alexa Bliss is responsible for a few inappropriate moments. After Randy Orton defeated The Fiend in late 2020, Alexa Bliss was not happy. It became her personal mission to make the Viper's life as miserable as possible. She did some messed up stuff, like making Orton puke black liquid, among other creepy and disgusting things. However, the evilest thing Alexa Bliss did happened on the January 11th, 2021, one episode of Raw. Randy Orton was fighting his old rival, Triple H, when suddenly the arena went black and Alexa appeared in the ring. She then did something unexpected and shot a fireball into Randy Orton's face. We would see the extent of the damage the next week when Randy had to start wearing a protective mask. Beating someone up is one kind of violence, but burning someone's face is a whole nother level, and that level definitely isn't PG. The Usos and the New Day's rivalry in 2017 was awesome. They had some great matches, but the most memorable 
moment wasn't during a fight. On SmackDown, the two teams faced off in a rap battle, and despite the MC saying, We're gonna keep it clean, alright? Still PG. The segment did not stay that way. The two teams were going at it, and then Jimmy Uso said this. Just don't get all rated R like your boy Xavier Woods. <laughs> Jimmy was referring to private videos of Xavier Woods with fellow WWE wrestler Paige that had been leaked a few months earlier. It was insane hearing this reference on WWE TV, and the moment was actually edited out when WWE put the clip on their YouTube channel. Brock Lesnar is unlike any wrestler for a lot of reasons. One of them is the stuff that he was able to get away with during the PG era. One of the most shocking and inappropriate things Lesnar did was when he took on Randy Orton at SummerSlam 2016. Orton put in a good fight, but Brock is called the Beast for a reason. However, the most violent part was when Lesnar busted Randy Orton wide open. And I do mean wide open. The bloodshed was so bad, it rivaled what ECW was doing in the 90s. After Orton got busted open, the match basically came to an end right then and there. And it's a good thing it did. Reports later said that Randy Orton wasn't supposed to bleed as much as he did, but that doesn't change the fact that this is one of the most violent moments in PG era history. Shortly after the 24-7 championship was introduced, Drake Maverick and R-Truth would start feuding for the the title. The rivalry got heated up when Truth pinned Maverick during his wedding and won the title. Following the incident, Drake's wife, Renee Michelle, started appearing on TV with him. Once Maverick won back the title, he went on a honeymoon with his bride. This led to a segment where Drake Maverick and Renee Michelle were about to consummate their marriage, and it was incredibly inappropriate for a PG show. Look, come on, little girl, just hold with me. This felt like something fans would have seen during the Attitude Era and not on a PG family-friendly WWE show. On the last Raw before the 2015 Survivor Series, Paige and Charlotte had a contract signing for their match at the pay-per-view. It was all pretty normal stuff, and Charlotte even said she was doing the match as a tribute to her younger brother, Reed Flair, who had passed away in 2013 at the age of 25. This prompted Paige to say this. You're wrong, sweetheart. Cause your little baby brother, he didn't have much fight in him, did he? Oh, come on! This was a very inappropriate moment and crossed the line for a lot of people. It's unclear if the Flair family knew that the comment about Reed was going to be made or not, but either way, it still went too far. Even in the Attitude Era, this probably wouldn't have been appropriate. What makes it even more uncomfortable to watch is that Paige looks uneasy as she's about to say the line. We need to lighten the mood. Watch this video to see the most embarrassing WWE bloopers of all time.